What's up my friends, welcome back. As you know, uh, one month back, I posted that I will make another Q&A video. So finally, I have time for this, so I will record this. This is an unscripted video. So anything I will answer is just stuff that I know. So if I have a question that I know, know, don't know the answer, maybe I will give you like a link so, or where to find it. But if I don't know the answer, I won't answer it. So uh, as, as always, before we start with the questions, I have to, a few things to announce. First of all, right now I'm posting a lot of stuff on Facebook as well. So please go and follow me there because each day I'm posting as on Instagram and Facebook the short videos some tests, some more photos with the project that I'm working on. So please, if you want to follow me there as well, just go to the page, you will have find the link below and follow me on Facebook as well. The second thing I want to announce, uh, in, a few, in a few days, maybe like a month, we'll get to 1, uh, 100,000 subscribers. So that is like a huge milestone for me. So thank you very much for all the support. So stay tuned for a special video, I'll make another giveaway maybe two or three giveaways. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, an oscilloscope or a power supply. We will see. So stay tuned for that. And once again, thank you very much. And the third uh, part that I want to announce is that I'm working on a new web page for better tutorials and that you can log in, create your account. But I can't say more for now because there is a lot of work with database, with MyQNL, with PHP and all this type, uh, all this type of, of coding. So just have in mind that I'm working on a new page, uh, new web page. Sorry, so stay tuned for that, and I hope that you will like it. Okay, so now we can start with the the questions. I posted one on my Patreon account and uh, another one on the YouTube for the YouTube uh, subscribers. So let's start with Patreon for from NC Khan. He's asking me how is the Kickstarter campaign for the polder portable soldering iron. Okay, so this question is 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 very very good. So he's talking about the soldering iron. As you all know, when I've made the last tutorial about the soldering iron, I talk about the Kickstarter campaign. And yes, the campaign is almost ready. I'm working on that. But there is a lot of stuff to do for, for the portable soldering iron because I want to make like a kit. Let me just let me just get the iron. Okay, so here I have the modules. This is the third version and this is the version 3.2 which is the final version, is the, the better one with the connector, as you can see, the, the, last, the last version on the YouTube channel, on the tutorial, was using a USB connector. And that's not a good idea because this is using 21 volts, so USB connector is not that good with that voltage, so I changed back with the, the DC connector, but a little bit smaller, so as you can see, it can enter, it can fit okay in this uh, 3D printed case. So what I want to do is to make some kits, and those kits will include the, the case, the box, which will be made out of cardboard with my logo on it. So I have to order all those boxes. I have to make a plan of how, much, how many components I need and I have to, stay, to keep in touch with all the suppliers. So I have to go on Alibaba or Aliexpress to ask for the prices for the components, for the microcontroller, the capacitors. Then I have to make the kits. And the most expensive part is shipping. So this is a very long process because I have to get the best price because this, if this uh, kit will get over $70 or $80, nobody will order this kit. So I, I want to get the best price. So for that, I have to talk with a lot of suppliers. So stay tuned for that. The, kit, the, the, product, the campaign is almost started. I'm not sure when I will post it on Kickstarter. It, it, it is on Kickstarter, but it's not public. So all I can say is stay tuned for that because it will be, it will be launched soon. Uh, because the price of this unit for now with all the components that I have is around 20 or $25 for each unit with a 3D case, with the primer, with the cable and everything that you need. But the most expensive part is shipping because not for all countries, but for some of the countries it's like $25 only shipping. So almost the price of the unit, it's only the shipping. So if you sum that up, you will get like each, each module will cost like $50 to sell on Kickstarter. So if I want to earn some money myself for a future project, maybe, maybe make some mold injected cases for this, for this module, I have to put the module at $60. And I think with $60, nobody will order this soldering iron. So that's why it's a little bit tricky to make this campaign. But anyway, stay tuned for that because I will launch it soon, as soon as I can. And also I have to make the videos, the tutorials, the how to, to unbox the case, how to mount everything, how to program it, because I won't sell the soldering iron in that kit. I, won't, I will sell only the kit, so you will get the board, the components, the program and the videos. So you have to mount this yourself in, in your home, in your workshop. So I think that's it for this question. Next, we have another question for Cossacks. 
Karanatasis, Cosas Karanatasis. I hope I'm telling this your name okay. So, hello, uh, what's your opinion about Y phone? Oh, I saw this question and I don't know why the Y phone is. And also, he's giving me a link, but the link is broken, so I can't answer this question. I'm very sorry. Okay, so there was just only two questions on Patreon. And once again, I have to thank you to all my patrons for the support. Each month I have more and more patrons and your support will help me to buy more modules, more Arduinos, more stuff for the project. So thank you very much. Okay, so let's just change to the... Okay, so let me just go to my channel and here I go. So, okay, so on YouTube we have more than 105 comments and questions. So I'm not sure that I can answer all of this. I'll go like randomly. We'll start with the first one and then if we have time, because I don't want to make like a five hours video, if we have time, I will answer all of those, but there are a lot of questions. So anyway, we start with the first question. The first question is, what is bootstrapping? Once again, as I said before, I don't have a script for this. So if I don't know the answer, I won't answer it. I'll just tell you that I don't know the answer. So just Google that, maybe you'll find the answer. So in this case, what is bootstrapping? I'm not sure. I think it has something to do with amplifiers, with operation amplifiers, when you connect the, the output and the input. Something with adjusting the input imp impedance, as you know, the op-amps must, uh, need, they have a very high impedance at the input, so current won't flow at the input rails. So I think it has something to do with that, adjusting the input uh, resistance, something like that. Okay, the second question, what is the difference between a Schottky diode and a Zener diode? Okay, so this, I mean, there are a lot of diodes. We have the normal, the Zener, the Schottky. Uh, pretty much all diodes are made with a PNN co connection uh, with semiconductors. But if you think the, the Schottky diode is made with a metal and semiconductor connection. So that's the main difference between these two diodes. The Zener is made with a PN connection and the, the Schottky is made with a P and a metal connection. And usually the, Zen, the Schottky has a very low forward voltage, uh, around 0.2 volts. So it's used with uh, low voltage circuits. Pretty much that's, that is the main uh, difference between these two, these two diodes. Okay, the next question, how we can make, I'm going a little bit faster on these questions because I want to answer uh, as more questions as I can. How we, can we make our drone optical proof and install sonar? Optical proof, I don't know what you mean about that. I mean, install sonar, I think that is pretty easy, just use those very small distance sensor with ultrasound. But optical proof, I think you mean maybe like a distance sensor, but with optical sensor, with infrared light or something like that. I don't really understand your question. Sorry. Okay, another question. I found an AC and DC circuit that contains four diodes, two resistors, one polyester capacitor. It will give, if we give 220 volts AC to this circuit, oh, this, it will give 12 volts DC. Can you make and explain this circuit? Well, this circuit is very easy. I, I think that you're a beginner because this is the typical uh, full bridge rectifier. This is a rectifying circuit. So if, uh, if you have AC voltage, you apply that four diodes is in the, in the shape of a rectifier, I think. You rectify the signal. That means that you will get only the positive uh, part of the wave. So in that way, you can charge up the capacitor, the poly polyester capacitor at the output. And if you charge it, you will get a steady DC voltage. So you pass from AC to DC. And also you tell me that you're getting 12 volts DC. So I think that those two resistors that you're telling me here are used in the configuration of a voltage divider. So you get from 220 volts and you make that divider to 12 volts. But this is not a good setup if you want power because to make a voltage divider from 220 volts, you need high resistance uh, resistors like uh, 100K or 200K. And so that means that this will be uh, limited in current. So if you have... If you want to supply your circuit with this voltage, with these 12 volts, you can do that because you will have 12 volts, but the, the current will be limited. So that's not a good idea. You will have to use some other sort of regulation with a transformer. Usually lower the voltage to 12 volts and then you rectify it and apply to your circuit. So that's it. What is the difference between a power supply and a charger? Well, I think the difference is pretty obvious because the power supply, you can set the voltage limit, you can set the current limit, you can, you can set all these values. And the charger uh, mainly is designed to charge up the load, in this case a battery. And you, if you have a battery that's charging with constant current and constant voltage, the voltage can be changed and the current limit can be changed. It's, it's always the same till the battery is fully charged. Also, you can have a circuit that detects the feedback and maybe you have a load or battery that's charging 
uh, faster at the beginning and lower and, and with the lower limit lower current limit at the end so pretty much the charger is designed to charge that battery with the and protect it with current and voltage limits and the power supply where you can change it you can apply it to battery you can use a power supply as a charger if you set the, the current and voltage limits for a constant current and constant voltage battery you can charge it but you can use a charger as a power supply you can supply maybe to motors or, or stuff like that because the charger will have limitations in order to protect the load and if you connect it to a motor or stuff, or stuff like that it will detect that it will draw a much uh, more cor current and it will stop the charging process uh, but uh, the power supply doesn't have that kind of circuit i hope that i i you will understand me okay another question what is your electronical background well i'm an electronic engineer one year back i almost one year back i finished electronic engineer studies here in barcelona okay let's go to the next question how to apply pad control in any system okay what kind of programming logic involves well the logic i mean you can use directly an arduino because a microcontroller it will have all the logic inside that you need for the pad control but anyway the pad control goes like this you have an output and you want to that output to be a value and then you have a feedback that will tell you the real value let's give an example you have to control temperature and you want the output to be the heater to be 100 degrees the feedback will tell you that is 120 degrees the first thing that you have to do is to get the error and the error is uh, the difference between the value that you want and the value that you have in this case 120 minus 100 you get a, an error of about 20. you put that error in the formulas which are always the same the, the proportional the integrate and the derivative formulas you get the pad value and then you apply that PID value to something that will change the output. In this case, let's say that you apply that to a MOSFET that will to control the power applied to the, to the heater. And in this case, if you have 120 but you have 100, you have to lower the power. If you, have one, you want 100 but you have 80 degrees, you have to increase the power. And just like that, you have to control the PID uh, code to apply that to your system. But you, you have a lot of time adjusting the constants of the P, I and D uh, variables. That is a tr the tricky one, you can just do it manually, uh, control it, increasing the values till you get good results. And you can use some formulas with the, the amplitude and the oscillation time of this, of this uh, control. And then you will get the first uh, variable, then the second, and then the third. But that is uh, more time consuming. Okay, the next question. What things to consider when using MOSFETs in parallel for power connection? I am building a PMSM controller, but stuck at Pars Electronics. I want 120 volts and 400 amps. 400 amps, that, that's a very powerful circuit uh, controller. Okay, and what is the role of the capacitor? Well, first of all, the role of the capacitor, I'm not sure about what capacitor are you talking about because I'm not seeing the circuit. But anyway, this, the capacitor will smooth your signal or, or store energy. And uh, putting MOSFETs in parallel, well, the least I can tell you, I'm not sure, I'm not an expert on this topic, but maybe the, the parasitive capacitance of each pin of the, the gate, the drain, dra drain and the source will maybe sum up, up, and also the resistance will be in parallel, the resistance between the source and the drain of the, each MOSFET, so the total resistance will be lower because it's a parallel connection, so that will leave you to drive more current. And I can tell you more because I'm not an expert on this topic, so... I don't know, maybe Google it. Can you recommend any good resources for learning uh, the basic radio frequency, RF? Well, no, I can because once again, I don't know, I don't have any book of, about this. And I'm pretty sure that if you Google it, you will find something that will recommend you a better source. I'm not, uh, I'm not your guy for this. Can you make a video about your setup, storage and tools? Well, I could put that on my to-do list. Oh, please leave below if you're interested in something like that to show you my workshop, the tools that I use, the oscilloscope, the, the power supplies and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, I can make you a tour of my workshop. I didn't have that on my to-do list, but if you're interested, I could make it. Okay, can you make a video about... Uh, no, <laughs> this is the same question. Okay, how to learn programming? Well, just start a project. In my case, I didn't learn, for example, Arduino programming in the university. I learned it on my own. So I've started with a very simple project, controlling some motors with PWM signal. Then you get to radio controls, to communication, I2C communication. I had a lot of errors, but each time I look over the, the functions, I Google that on, on the internet, you see how to use that function and by that you learn. So you start a project, you will fail it, 
you will learn, you will fail it, fail it again till you get good results, and by that I'm sure that you will learn. And the, uh, for me, it's the best way to learn, just start a project and try the best to make it work. And by that you will learn on the way. Okay, yay, finally, I hope that you will help me with this. I have created a line follower Arduino car. But here is my question, can I control it, uh, can control it to stop in several places on the line, whatever, uh, whether it's momentary or for a full over? Or make the car move in reverse order? How can I do this? Okay, so you basically you have a car that follows a line and you want to stop it or make any other decision. What you could do is just add another sensor, maybe add a color sensor and place over the line some colors. If you detect green, you will stop. If you detect red, you will maybe go in reverse. If you detect any other color, color you will, I don't know, change the speed or stuff like that. So just add another sensor. Or you could add a, mag a magnetic sensor and place a positive side of the magnet. And if you detect that magnet with the positive side, you stop. And if you detect it with the negative side, maybe you stop just for five seconds. I don't know, just involve another sensor. And by that you can control the line with your, I think you're using infrared sensors and detect the light that uh, is bouncing from the line and add another sensor to control the, to the stop, goes forward and stuff like that. Okay, how to use a GPS module with the Arduino? Okay, this was posted one month ago, but this weekend I posted a video with a GPS module and the Arduino, how to get the coordinates and how to calculate distances, the altitude and stuff like that. So just watch that video, I hope that it will help you. It is possible to control the DJI NASA M Light flight controller with the Arduino. Well, I never used this flight controller, but I'm pretty sure that this flight controller already has a microcontroller, so the Arduino is also a microcontroller, so I'm not understanding the question. You want to control a microcontroller with another microcontroller? I'm not sure that you, what you want to say, maybe how to program the flight controller using Arduino, the ID of the Arduino, so I'm not sure what you're telling me. I don't know anything about this flight controller. Okay, then we have a question in Japanese or Chinese, I'm not sure. Can you explain the CC and CV and how to make a circuit that can give both constant voltage and constant current? Current. Well, CC and CV is basically constant voltage and constant current. So you fix your power supply to a constant value. To get constant voltage is very easy. Just use a buck or bus converter. You set it to that voltage, you'll have a feedback. So if you set it, for example, 30 volts, as you have say here in your question, if you have 30 volts, 0.1, the feedback will tell that to your IC. I don't know, it can be a microcontroller or a special design IC. And then you will lower the voltage. And the same for the current. You have, you have a feedback, the if the current value is higher, you will, lower the, you will limit that current with the circuit, with the MOSFET or anything else. So pretty much with the Buster Book Converter, you can get that. I made some videos about that, but using the Arduino, and using the Arduino is not as fast as uh, using a special design IC. Just for, search for the LM8635 or something like that. Uh, those are buck and bus converter drivers. Okay, the next question. I am trying to make a closed loop controller for stepper motor. Need your help. Okay, so this is a request where anyway, if you want to make a closed loop controller for stepper motors, the best way to do it is to just place an encoder on the shaft. That will count the steps of your motors. So even if your motor is, will skip some steps, electronically skip some tests, the real value will be read with the encoder and by that you can make a closed loop and always have the same angle of your motor. Okay, the next question. Could you do any type of Arduino life hacks or tricks with the board or instead a top easy pro Okay, so basically you're asking me for any kind of project with the Arduino, simple project. If you look on my channel, I think 50% of my projects involve an Arduino, so just watch those videos. Okay, a comparative between speed, power, and how much output, price, etc. between the Arduino and any other open source board. Well, I have on my to-do list a comparison between the Arduino and the STM32 because the STM32 is a lot better, much more speed, much more memory. So I've bought the boards, I've used those, you can use those with the Arduino IDE if you install some libraries. So I think I will make a video about that. If you are interested, please, please leave a comment below and we'll see, we'll see the, if I will make the video or not. Okay. Class the amplifier using IR. Okay, this is a request, this is not a question. Okay, instead of the LM393, can I use the LM319 or the LM358 or the LM2903? Okay, first of all, I've never used the LM2903, but I've used all the others. But anyway, if you want to use an uh, operational amplifier, all you have to do is just go to the datasheet and use for the, 
for what you're looking for. If you have limits in current, in voltage, the, the maximum voltage, the inputs, the amplification, the skew, the skew rate and stuff like that. And if that will fit your specification that you're looking for, just use the operation amplifier. So all you have to do is just search the data sheet, read it, not all, but the steps that you that you are looking for. And if it is okay, well, yeah. And I think those those three, four, the, the first three are almost the same because I never used the LM2903, but the other ones, I think they are almost the same. So yeah, you could use it. I, I'm not sure. How to become a good electronics hobbyist? Well, just make electronics, just take any project, just start it. And if it's your hobby, I'm sure that you will like it. If you want to be a professional, you have to study a lot more. But as an electronics hobbyist, just start a project. Even if you fail it, you will learn something new and the second one will be a lot better. So if you, if you have this as a hobby, I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy it. Please, can you help me, sir, by teaching properly how to program Arduino and a lot of signs? Okay, well, just all I can do is make videos. So just watch my videos and by that you will learn Arduino. Once again, start a project, make errors, and with that you will learn. I'm not, understand, I'm not understanding the waveform of an LED bulb or CFL light bulb circuit. Can you explain? Okay, I'm not pretty sure what you're asking for, the wave of, or this, of these bulbs, but I'm pretty sure that you want to make the difference between DC and AC because an LED bulb will work always on, AC, on DC signal, DC voltage. Even if you connect a light bulb with LEDs on an AC voltage on your home, I'm pretty sure that inside you have a voltage rectifier and then you lower the voltage for the LEDs. And the CFL light bulb is the, are those white uh, fluorescent light bulbs. Those can, those can work with AC signal. So if you want to control the power of an LED, all you have to do is to increase or decrease the power of the DC voltage, maybe with a bus or buck converter or, or PWM signal applied to a MOSFET. And if you want to trim on CFL light bulb, I'm not sure, but I think you can do that because with the triac, for example, you can control all, only the incandescent light bulbs. For CFL light bulbs, I think you have to have always the same frequency and always the same value. So the wave is an AC wave and the, the other side is not a wave, it's a steady DC voltage. I'm not pretty sure if it, this is the answer that you're looking for. Okay, sorry for this. Can you tell us how to build a laser engraver yourself? Well. A laser engraver is pretty much a CNC machine. So I already have a video about a CNC machine. It is very old, like three years old. But anyway, it's pretty easy to make one. It is very expensive because you have to build the frame of the machine. But I recommend you to build the frame out of aluminum bars. Then you, you will have to buy a ramps uh, because those are very, very cheap. The ramps driver with the stepper drivers with an Arduino Mega. And you will then just Google the BCNC uh, controller you upload that code to the uh, Mega and then you install the BCNC software and you can control the machine in, with G codes. And instead of adding a drill, you have to control a PWM signal to a MOSFET that is controlled to your laser. So take out the drill, put a laser and by that, instead of, having a, instead of milling, you will engrave with the laser. It is a very simple project, but it's very expensive because buying the motors, the parts, the metal parts, the, the drivers and all like this will be like 150 euros and with that, you can just buy a 3D printer and hack it and put a laser engraver, engraver instead of the plastic extruder. Okay, I'm, I might make a video about that, so I'll put that on my to-do list, but I'm not sure because as I said before, it is very expensive for a very simple project because all the job is already done because the code is on, online, the schematic is online. Okay, why do transistors have different coding or, coding or series? Explain about different transistor and MOSFETs. Well, well, because there are different transistors. Each transistor has different current limit, different internal configuration, different doping. So yes, you have MOSFET, you have BJTs, you have IGBTs. So that's why you need a different series. So because there are different components. And I'm not sure if that, I'm not sure, okay. Okay, brother, okay, the next question. Brother, please make a four or an eight by 48 matrix LED matrix with Bluetooth. Well, I already have a video about that. It's not eight, uh, four by, uh, 8 by 48, I think it's 8 by 24, because those max 72, 19 drivers, I think they are, can, can take uh, up to that matrices, but you can put that together in series and make a bigger panel. So just watch that video and maybe we'll be able to make a bigger matrix. All I can say is that about this, uh, about this project. 
Do you want to build a Windows tablet or laptop? Well, no, I don't think, uh, no, because that will be easy because you, the parts are already made or making from zero will be very difficult. Maybe I'll do something with the Raspberry Pi with Windows or Linux. We'll see, we'll see that later. Okay, I just love your project on electronics, so having a question in my mind about the soldering you made by you, can you tell me the use of the MOSFET? What? The MOSFET, it helped me as I am wondering how can I create my own, my own? Or tell me, me about the Kickstarter you using, say... Okay, so you want to know about the MOSFET of my board on the portable soldering iron. And about the Kickstarter, I've already talked about the Kickstarter and the MOSFET is pretty basic. You use the MOSFET to control the power applied to the iron tip. Using a PWM signal and a BJT at the gate as a driver, you control the power of that MOSFET and by that the heating, the heater inside of the tip and increasing and decreasing the, the temperature. That's pretty basic. Okay, can you, can you please explain how PAD works? Okay, I've already explained that. Not in details, but pretty much that's it. I already have like three or four videos about PAD on my channel. Okay, the next question. I really appreciate your work, very helpful and clean explanation. I've been waiting for your video about PAD, once again, the PAD control of 220 volts AC, as you said in your PAD temperature control. Okay, I'm not sure, but this video is already posted. I, I have a video, just go to my channel, just search for PAD 220 volts AC, and you will find a video with PAD control with a triac and 220 volts. This was posted like five months ago, so just go and, and watch it on my channel. If you're waiting for that video, it was posted like five months ago. Can you perform through hole plating or double layer PCB? With what? With the CMC machine or what? I'm, I'm not sure. If you want to a hole plating, like a homemade hole plating, maybe use some solder paste and heat it and you will have like an internal hole plating. I'm, I'm not sure if you want something more than that. Okay, how to make a Tesla coil? Well, I'll put this on my to-do list, but I'm not sure because there are already a lot of videos about Tesla coils. But yes, I'll have this on my, this on my to-do list. Can you program and implement an 8051 for GSM module and send a mail for the interruption of the circuit? Okay, I'm preparing, I have on my to-do list this project. I'm preparing a project with a GSM module and an Arduino that will send you notification each time that something happens. So stay tuned for that. I can send more, I can say more about that. How to add memory, EEPROM and oh, for the Arduino Duo, Due. Well, the Arduino already has an EEPROM, but if you want more, you can add a module with an EEPROM. For example, if you ever use those small uh, real-time clock modules, those have the chip, the DS3031, I think is the chip, but they also have an EEPROM that is controlled with I2C communication. So all you have to do is to buy that module, the I2C communication uh, EEPROM module, connect it to the Arduino, and then you can store data on the EEPROM. So that's it. Okay, DIY Arduino Mega. Another request, STM32 flight controller, make tutorial please. Okay, this is another request and I have my to-do list of flight control, but instead of using the Atmega328, I will use the 32, the STM32, because it is a lot better. Okay, how to ma make a negative voltage variable power supply? Okay, this is a very interesting topic, but pretty much all you have to do is to use the transformer and the output of the transformer will be divided in two coils so we'll have the middle pin of the coils will be the ground and then you have the positive and negative side. And each side you will use a voltage rectifier once again, but you, so you have two voltage rectifiers for each side and by that you will get ground, positive voltage and negative voltage. And then you have to make some sort of circuit to control only the input AC voltage, so by that you can ver vary the output or for each side, the positive and negative side, another bus or buck converter so you, can vary the, so you can change the output of the power supply. I have this on my to-do list, but it's a pretty complicated design, so stay tuned for that. Okay, simple E and I noise filter. I think this is a request, I'll look what is that, I'll look into it. Dear Electronoop, can you make a tutorial on embedded C with A-bit AVR at Mega328 or STM32, Cortex-M? Other Arduino programming, especially I2C and SPA communication. Okay, so if you go to my channel, you'll see that I have a lot of Arduino pro uh, programming and also FPGAs. So I might start something on embedded C. Uh, during my time on the university, we, we've used the MSP430 microcontrollers, I think, from Texas Instruments, and we've programmed that in C using a code composer from Texas Instruments as well. 
So maybe I will make some tutorials on how to start on directly with C uh, without using the libraries from the Arduino. The Arduino coding is almost the same as C, but you have a lot of libraries already made. So yes, I'll show you how to make I2C communication, SPA communication, how to use the ports, how to make the interaction vector and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. I might make a tutorial on C programming. Can we make a 20 megahertz DSO using Arduino? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that you can't. I mean, 20 megahertz, that's a lot. The Arduino, I mean, the basic Arduino, the Uno and the Nano works at 60 megahertz. And also you will have, you will need an, a display and the display will slow the process. I'm not sure, but the idea of an Arduino based oscilloscope is, is not that good because it is very slow. Okay, what kind of PCB you have on your wall, in your wall? Well, on, on my wall, I have all kinds of PCBs, but basically these are motherboards from old PCs and also some sort of PCBs from all the printers and stuff like that. Basically electronics then don't work anymore. So I just glue them to make a cool background. I hope you like it. Can you make a cheap Arduino based oscilloscope? Okay, once again, well, no, I can't because that's not a good idea. The Arduino is very slow, so you'll just be able to see very slow signals and with very poor resolution. Okay, what a video with what? Want a video with the TL494? Okay, another request. FPV receiver with Arduino. Okay, this is another request, it's not a question, but anyway, an FPV, FPV receiver. I don't think the Arduino can withstand video control because video is, will need a lot of speed and a lot of uh, memory, but I'm not sure what you're asking for, but FPV receiver with Arduino, I'm pretty sure that you can do that. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. Can we make a buck converter from 2 volts to 36 volts by use okay first of all from 2 volts to 36 volts that is a boost converter a buck converter will go from high voltages to low voltages but anyway using the 555 timer well i'm not sure but going from 2 volts to 36 that is a lot and maybe you will have to use some mosfets in parallel and a huge coil and a huge capacitor but that will i'm not sure if that will be stable you'll have a lot of ripples at the output because from 2 volts through to 36 that is a lot I'm not sure, just, just, just try it, take your components and try and make something. Just look my uh, boost, com boost converters uh, tutorial and change the circuit with a bigger coil, more MOSFETs and stuff like that. Just try it and tell us in the comments if you, if you can make that. What, want to know if you will have a 4.0 portable soldering iron. Okay, so the last version that you've seen is the 3.0, but now this last one is based on a 3.0 two version because I have one more and then the last one this is the perfect one it has no no errors so this will be posted in the Kickstarter videos so stay tuned for that you, you will be able to buy the kit and mount it in your home okay where did you learn the Arduino and electronics well electronics I've, I've learned electronics in the university during uh, these five years and Arduino by myself use, watching videos watching tutorials and making projects uh, okay, that's it. Can I buy the Arduino clone which costs six or seven dollars because the real Arduino is very expensive? Well, yes, of course you can. No one will stop you. If you want to support Arduino, just buy the, the real, the original one. But uh, I will tell you that all my Arduinos are clones. Uh, the Nanos, for example, cost me only two dollars and I never, never had problems with these Arduinos. I don't know if you know, but uh, I've made an escape room and that escape, escape room is working now for like one and a half years, 12 hours a day with Arduinos. I, we have like 50 or 60 Arduinos in there and we never had problems with the Arduino. We, have, we had problems with the LCDs, with noise, uh, with the communication, but with the Arduino itself, we never had problems. Not with the voltage regulation, with the memory, we can upload the codes. So yes, you can work with the clone because it's pretty much the same, but with uh, less pricey components. Okay, I have a part, I have a problem with my drone. It is not stable. One motor started a bit slower and it get crushed during testing. Okay, so maybe your ESCs are not uh, synchronized for the, are not calibrated for the same range. So make sure you calibrate all the ESCs with the same signal, usually from 1000 microseconds to 2000 microseconds. Okay, can you make an SMD reflow oven using toaster oven and Arduino using PID temperature control? Yes. This project is on my to-do list. I already made a few tests and now we'll use not a toaster, but I'm using a, a real oven 
And yes, all you have to do is to control the temperature with a the thermocouple and maybe make a ramp for the temperature to increase or decrease the temperature, set it to 400 or 450 degrees. So we will see, you will have a control, a keypad, an LCD. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay, so the next question, can you make a DIY FV quadcopter? Okay, so for the quadcopter, as you all know on my channel, you will see that I have like five videos about Arduino based drone. And that is like a DIY drone. But if you want to make a DIY drone with parts that you already buy, that is not really a DIY. Because you, will buy the, you won't make the ESC, you won't make the motors, you won't make the flight controller. All you have to do is to buy those, merge them together and program it with a already made code. So yes, I have this, I've had this on my to-do list. I already bought the parts, I bought the ESCs, the motors, so I'll make a pretty basic how to make a drone. But that is not a DIY drone, it's just how to mount it. If you want to make a DIY drone, you have to design the ESC, you have to design the, the older parts, even the motor. So yeah, stay tuned for that. What's your opinion about photonics and its potential? Well, the photonics and its potential. I'm not really sure about what you're talking. It's not my topic, so I don't have an answer for this. How to dim a 100 watts bulb as well as switch another appliance in that same Bluetooth track dimmer? I think you're talking about the Bluetooth track dimmer project and yes, you can control with that same circuit, you can control a 100 watt bulb. I think you can go up to 200 watts. So just use the same circuit. It's, uh, but make sure that is not an inductive load because that can create some problems, some spikes and stuff like that. So yeah, if you have a light bulb that is uh, incandescent light, you can use this, the same circuit as in that project. I have also a small electronics channel. How to grow up? Please guide me. Big fan of your Arduino projects. Well, just make videos. Just make videos, try to make good quality, and I'm not talking about the video quality only, but also about what you're, what you're telling in the videos. And for my experience, I had like, it took me like one year to get only to 1,000 subscribers, and one more year to get to 10,000 and only uh, a little bit more than one year to get to 100,000 subscribers. So if you post uh, each week, you get make good content, you will see like an exponential curve of your subscribers. Just make good content and wait. That's all I can say for you. Where did you learn how, what you are doing? If FPGA, for example. So I've learned FPGAs in university. We had, a, we had a class that was based only on FPGAs, Verilog and DHL programming. What is your favorite project so far? And what would you love to make? My favorite project, well, yeah, definitely, definitely the portable soldering iron. And that is because this is a very, very complex project because it involves a lot. You start from zero, from the idea. I made the schematic, you test the schematic with the Simulink. Then you make the layout, you order the PCB, you have, the, you have, to, you have a, uh, some errors, you make the second PCB, the third PCB. Then you solder the components, so you learn how to solder components how to burn the bootloader, how to upload the code, then in the code you use PAD control of the temperature, you read the temperature of the thermocouple, you amplify the signal with the op-amp, you control screens with ice crazy communication, you control the heater uh, and stuff like that. It also involves 3D printing for the, for the case. So yeah, this is very complex. So this is like my favorite project till now. And I think you're, that you're talking about my projects. Okay, what is your profession? Well. I have a part-time job, but I consider myself right now a YouTuber because like 99.9% .9 of the time that I'm working is for a YouTube channel. And that involves the web page, now the second web page, two channels, the Facebook page, Instagram, the forum with the Q&A. So I think my profession is like YouTuber, maybe. Please DIY a one wheel hoverboard. Yeah, okay, another, another request, but this is a very, very difficult project. Next project, just some clue, not spoilers. Next project, okay, just a clue. This project will have a triple phase output. That's all I can say. Another project will involve a Raspberry Pi. That's all I can say. And another project will involve some huge coils and huge capacitors. And that's it, I can say more. Okay. Please release a tutorial on, on how to make a robot arm using stepper motor. Yes, I have that on my to-do list. It is a 3D printed uh, arm. The parts are not mine. I downloaded those from Thingiverse. I will print those files and use the, my own code and my own circuit 
to control some stepper motors and by that you will have a, a robot arm using step motors. So stay tuned for that. Please make an Arduino arm ATM machine. Yeah, <laughs> okay, another request. An ATM machine. How to improve the Arduino coding skills? Okay, I already talked about that. Just start with the project and, and you will learn with that. Calculating com components in electronic circuit. Depend designing your own circuit. Okay, this is not a question. I, I'm not, this is not a question, it's, a, it's like a request. Does big motors cause interference with unref module communication? Mine does, by the way. Yes, we had a lot of projects, even the, in the in a university project, we made a drone with this module, with, that, with this radio module, and yes, the motors will affect the communication, but not the radio communication between the module, because that is like 2.4 gigahertz, but it affected the communication between the module and the microcontroller, and that was an SPA communication. So what we have to do is to place a big ground plane below those communication and make the communication between the, the, the connection between the module, the radio module and the microcontroller very short because the, the, the back EMF, the magnetic field will affect the communication, the SPA communication, not the radio connection. So yes, we also place the microcontroller and the radio module on the exterior of the board so we'll have less, uh, less interference from the motors. Okay, please make a video on Node MCU. Okay, another request. Can you make a video on seri of, or series on how to make an RC car including RX and TX? Well, yes, a few uh, weeks ago I posted a 3D printed Arduino based radio transmitter and I'm already working on a radio uh, a receiver for a thread, for a tank, an RC car, an RC boat. So yeah, stay tuned for that and we will see how to control stuff with the radio connection. Okay, the next question. Would you use an Arduino in an industrial environment? Well, I think no. Pretty much all the industrial machines like refrigerators, like uh, vending machine or the stuff that are making, like you make a lot of those, are using an FPGA because in that way you are sure that what you put on that FPGA is especially designed for your purpose. So I'm not sure, I'm, I know. We, we've used Arduino in our escape room, but th that is not like an industrial environment. But yes, I will say no to this. Please sir, make a bicopter flag controller using Arduino. Okay, so for this, if you go to the multi wii project for the Arduino drone, all you have to do is to change the schematic, you will see the schematic on that page, and change the code from quadex to bicopter. So that flight controller code will adapt to a bicopter, so you can upload it to the Arduino using the same module for the inertial movement. And yes, with that you can make the bicopter. It is the same, but you have to select another configuration in the code. Are you planning some big projects? Well, yeah, I always have big projects that will take me like five months of testing and preparing, but yes, I have those projects on my to-do list. Hello, bro, great videos. Thank you. We'll make any future video on high-frequency transformer design. Well, I'm not sure. I already have a, like a taser gun video that is using a transformer, a flyback transformer to get like 10,000 volts or something like that. If you want, just watch that video. I explain in details how the flyback transformer works. If, you, if that won't help you, well, I'm not sure if I will make another video about this topic. Okay, how did you get into electronics? Well, I started university. I first wanted to study video editing, but that university, university was very expensive. So then I started electronics and I love it and I'm doing it every day. So that's it. That's how I started. How to extract latitude and longitude data for satellite with GPS module? Well, watch my, late, my last video that is based on a GPS module and the Arduino. I will show how to get the latitude and longitude and how to calculate distances. So just watch that uh, video. Please make a video on the Node MCU ASP8266. Okay, another request. What do you think about Indian viewers? Uh, I think the same that I think about any other viewer. I mean, I love you all. Thank you very much for your support. And that's all I can say about this question. What do I think? I mean, it's the same. Hi, Electronoob. We have cheap $4 CMONK, CMONK ESC. Can we increase power with high-end power MOSFET? Okay, so you want to hack an ESC and increase power by changing the MOSFET. Well, I'm not sure if I recommend that. Only if you design the ESC, then yes, because you know all the parts. 
but if you have a stuck ESC and changing the MOSFETs, I'm not sure that uh, is a good idea. Okay, your studio tour and setup. Okay, another request, if you're interested, post it below. Explain the 80 Titan 85 development board. Well, I'm not sure about what development board are you talking about. The 80 Tiny 85, I've already made a video about that, how to make a programming PCB, connect that to the Arduino and program that chip with the Arduino. So just watch that if you want to know more. Replace Arduino with the 80 Tiny 85, oh, it's the same question, okay. Three times the same question. I would like to know how to, how you get started. What books your research? Okay, so just watch my other q and I've posted the books that I've uh, used in during the university time, but right now I'm not using any book for electronics. I have some books there, but I'm not using those because with the internet, you can when you have the problem, you can just search that and you will find a lot of uh, help on the internet. So I can't recommend any more books. Just watch that video and you will have the list for those books. Okay, the next question. What do you need to work what do you need to work with electronics? Well, a multimeter? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> a multimeter. <laughs> well, knowledge. I think you need knowledge. You just have to learn it by the way. By, by the... Okay. Just learn electronics and by that you can work with electronics. If you're not sure about anything, just don't touch the circuit and be careful. How bootstrap configuration works okay I think I already talked about that bootstrapping okay when you finish your drone which drone because I have like five drones right now <laughs> and three of those are working and the mini drone won't work because the power for the motors is very low so yes I'm now in the fifth version so yes just stay tuned for that I'm not sure when I will finish this drone my question to you is what is your good name? In YouTube you full-time job. And then what do you do the rest of the time? Okay. Please make a lithium-ion battery charger. Okay, I have that on my to-do list. Well, I would like to know your name. You are the best. Well, I think I share my name on my webpage. Just make a little bit of, of research and you will find it. Please answer my question. My Arduino is not good, working good. I am trying to reset it, but are there, the Arduino is not accepting the code. Please tell me how to fix that. Well, without seeing the code and see the error, I can't help you. What's the easier, easiest way to figure out the solution of the, the selection of the batteries for the Arduino-based project? Please help me out. Well, first of all, you will have to know how much current your circuit needs and what voltage. Usually, if you're using with the Arduino, you will need voltages above 5 volts. And if you're using something with motors or, or high loads, well, just calculate the, the current that you need and by that you will find the batteries. The, the, the amount of storage of your batteries because in that way your project will last for more time. That's all the only thing I can say about that. Okay, let's see more question. How to program the Node MCU? This is, I never used the Node MCU. Maybe I'll put that on my to-do list. Okay, so let's see more question. What is the best way to program Node MCU apart? Okay, so we have a lot of questions about Node MCU. So I will definitely put that on my to-do list. I will make some research and maybe make a video about that. Okay, how to interface Arduino to console application for PC? or maybe like a tool or make a crude application for monitoring the data on my serial over Ethernet. How did you get started with uh, MCU? By the way, you're awesome. Okay, so what, you want to make um, a console application for PC. Well, I'm not sure about that. I can't answer with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. i never seen that before. Maybe you're talking like a joystick, control that, attach that to your PC with Bluetooth. Or, I'm not sure. Why not show? Why not you show us your working space lab and also recommend how to the setup? Recommend us how to the setup. Okay, so another request to show you my lab. So I will definitely put that on my to-do list. So I'll make a video about my uh, working uh, working area, my workshop. Okay, how to do a DIY Arduino Mini with bootloading? Well, I already have a video about that. I show you how to make the Arduino and how to burn the bootloader and how to solder everything. So just watch that video, search for 
a homemade Arduino based, a homemade Arduino project or something like that. Okay. And I think this is the last question because I jumped over a few questions because we already have like almost an hour, I think. Okay, the last question, how to enable serial communication with Arduino? What do you mean about, what do you mean how to enable the serial communication? If you begin the word communication with the serial dot begin, well, that will be enabled. I think, I'm not sure what you're asking for. Okay, so those are all the questions for now. I hope that you will enjoy it. As you can see, I'm not an expert. I hope that my, my answers will help you. There are a lot of questions that I didn't, uh, that I didn't answer because I didn't know the, uh, the solution for that. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to this channel if you're new to this. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram because I post those uh, more videos and photos each day, every day. And also, if you consider helping me, helping my projects, just support me on Patreon. That's it for now. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Keep up, you guys.